A massive thank you to THQ Nordic for the review copy. Hi guys, I'm Mark Walker and welcome back to another Switch Up review. Maybe consider subscribing to the channel for all things Switch all the time. With fantastic visuals, a beautiful story and a comic book style inspired by the series by Joe Maduera back in 1998, Battle Chasers Night War has an incredible amount on its side. But does this classic turn-based combat adventure live up to the hype of the Final Fantasy series of the late 90s? Or is this one a relic to be returned to the sands of time? Let's find out. Years have passed since the great warrior and leader of men Aramis vanished. Left behind were his mighty gauntlets, artifacts of untold capability, giving their wielder the power to move mountains, as the stories were told. Also left behind was his daughter, Gully. She discovered the gauntlets and set in motion events that would make her a target of great importance and bring her into the company of her greatest offenders. Nolan, the wise and mighty wizard, his mysterious companion Calabretto, a war golem of immense power, Garrison, erstwhile companion and brother in arms to Aramis, now sworn protector to his only living kin, and the rogue Red Monica, who can be foe as quickly as friend. Together the battle chasers have travelled the capital lands while defending Gully from those who seek the power of her gauntlets for themselves. Nolan, on a personal quest to learn more about the mana sources which fuel the world's magic and technology, ventured to an untouched continent at the world's end, known as the Lost Isles. Everyone hang on! What are you waiting for? Shoot back! With what? It's a stealth ship. This is stealth? When he failed to return, the other chasers, Gully, Calabretto, Garrison and Red Monica, set a course for the Lost Isles to search for any signs of their old friend. And that is where your story picks up. It's instantly evident that this game is based on a cult comic and it shines through in every element of the story. Story is told through beautifully drawn cutscenes, fantastic dialogue between the characters, as well as a plethora of lore in the form of books and scraps of paper left throughout the world for you to discover. These characters are fleshed out in a way that I haven't seen in many years. A game such as this really lives or dies by its characterization, and here it's done excellently. Calabretto, the war golem, comes out with some cracking one-liners when he's dealing with some of the other characters, but also has a real soft and caring side. I guess not. I believe he was trying to thank you. Garrison, who holds his sword in the same way as Cloud, clearly a reference to Final Fantasy VII, he is a torn character and feels a sense of duty towards the missing Aramis. And it's lovely to see as the story progresses how he becomes more attached to Gully, your main character. Now Gully, who's on a quest to find her father, has an incredibly powerful pair of gauntlets. Much of the story and lore of the game talks about these, but it's only till much later in the game when you discover their true power. Nolan the Mage is definitely the comedy relief here, and I enjoyed his character immensely. His relationship with Red Monica is often highlighted and there are moments of laugh out loud hilarity between the two. All right, Red. Looks like it's just me and uh, uh figures. The story is full of action, suspense, twists and turns, and there are moments that will just make you smile. For me, story gets 19 out of 20. The music in Battle Chasers Night War is exceptional, from the intense opening sections to the more relaxed tribal style music of the main map, down to the darker and more sinister sounds of some of the later dungeons. Everything about the music in this game screams high budget, high production values, but clearly has inspirations from games past that had amazing music. 
When you enter combat, the scream makes a satisfying crack and the battle music begins. Rather than most battles being fueled by a barrage of sound, the nuanced music on offer here adds a delicateness to the combat which I really enjoyed. Now obviously when you fight bosses this music changes but overall it's very skillfully handled and never feels in your face or over the top. Now you will be fighting battles an incredible amount and I suppose this is one area where repetition could become an issue for some. The characters will often shout abuse during battles and you do hear the same lines a few times. When it is repeated it's often not spoken and will just come up as a text box above your character's head which I liked a lot, clearly trying to negate this issue. Environmental audio is equally impressive. From the sounds of waterfalls to streams, your footsteps on the ground and a multitude of layered sound effects that add to the overall atmosphere of the game. Every sound just sounds weighty and polished. And in many ways, it's these subtle sound effects that you don't necessarily pay attention to at the time that make the overall audio package so effective. The voice acting is incredibly well handled, with each character likeable and interesting, but also unique. What an artifact can do, especially to other artifacts. What do you mean, other artifacts? HD Rumble is done so exceptionally in this game that actually it's made me reconsider some of the scores I've given in the past. Each swing you make in combat has its own nuanced rumble, to the point where I could actually identify the attack I was doing by the sound of my Joy-Con. Unfortunately, I don't have the equipment available to capture this sound, but trust me when I say this is outstanding HD rumble. Overall, sound, music and audio get 20 out of 20. The gameplay of Battle Chasers really needs to be split into a few different areas. The first of these, I suppose, is the classic turn-based combat which has been inspired by the RPG greats. When you enter combat, you will see on the left-hand side of the screen an order list of where the characters are attacking. This is affected by the haste of your characters, which can also be changed with certain relics that you can apply, such as rings and different perks that you get later in the game. You take in turns to choose what attacks you want to do. Each character has the typical health bar with the mana bar below this. All standard fare. The developers put a lot of time into trying to refine this system without completely changing it. If you use your standard attacks, which, let's be honest, most of us completely ignore and just spam the magic ones, you build up overcharge, which basically functions as mana, so if you have none, you can build up a few overcharge attacks and then release some of your more powerful spells. I enjoyed this system because it removed the frustrations you often get where you haven't got the mana, you haven't got the ability to replace your mana, so you go through an entire dungeon unable to use any of your abilities and it just gets dull. Now there's no shifting the order of the characters here, you can't put one in front of the others and similarly you can't change the order they're stood in, but each character has his own role. Calabretto, the giant golem, is your healer and is actually one of the weakest of all the three characters. It was nice to have the small blonde girl as the overpowered character with all the punching power. As hopefully you would expect, the combat has a strategic element to it. Gully's main abilities focus on shielding your party, while Garrison can deal an incredible amount of damage including bleed damage, but Calabretto is the main man here. Keep that guy alive at all costs, and he will keep your party nice and topped up on health. Now, while I still pine for the limit breaks of Final Fantasy VII, this game has a burst meter. This is essentially the same thing. As you fight the enemies and you hit them, this burst meter goes up. It also goes up when you take damage, eventually allowing you a special move. This move isn't affected by time, so you can do it instantly, whereas every other move you have has a time attached to it. Generally, the rule is, the more basic the skill, the quicker it is. Those advanced magical skills, well, they're going to take a while to use. So if you do plan on using one of those when you're low on health, expect to potentially get hit in between choosing it and casting it. This is where you're going to want to get Gully to taunt the enemy so that all the attacks go her way and you can unleash hell from behind her defenses. 
Overall the turn-based system works really well and has been improved a lot since the early days of RPGs. But it hasn't been improved completely. When you're trawling through a quite easy dungeon and you're fighting the same enemy over and over again, it can get quite tedious because you know you can win the fight, you know exactly the combinations of buttons you're going to press, and doing it 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times just gets a little bit dull. Thankfully the characters level up at quite a good pace and you unlock new perks, new items and generally some epic loot that makes the whole experience worthwhile. Now the game does describe itself as a dungeon crawler, so let's look at that element. Dungeons have a random generation to them and you can choose a level between normal, hard and then legendary. And as you would expect, the loot that you receive from the dungeons when you choose the harder options is much better. The legendary option carries a steep price to death. If you do die before you reach the boss, you go to the very beginning of the dungeon and lose every bit of progress you've made. There are hidden areas in the dungeons as well as places to fish. Scraps of paper will flesh out the story with the lore that you require. And merchants and other characters offering unique quests will also arrive. The third element of the game is the overworld map. Once again the developers have refined a system that we're all used to. This has more of an on rails, almost board game element to it. Sometimes you'll have no option but to engage an enemy and other times you can take an alternate route. A marker will show you exactly where you should be going for your current mission. And the artistic style of this map is very unique, I liked it a lot. There are tons of hidden dungeons and just opportunities to go spelunking. You're never far from just a good adventure. The world feels thoroughly fleshed out, but there were definitely times when I was pining for the open world maps of past RPGs. Much of your opening 10 hours is going to be spent in and around a town area. Within this you learn the fundamentals of crafting new items, as well as alchemy, and doing jobs for different people around town. There is an incredibly deep crafting system on offer here, with the ability to put too many items into something you craft and potentially get an epic item at the end. It always feels like there's something to go for or something to achieve. Collecting up those hordes of usually useless tat in the dungeons feels worthwhile and something to actually aspire to rather than avoid. With classic turn-based combat, Battle bursts, beautifully randomly generated dungeons, traps, puzzles, secrets and loot, an overworld peppered with hidden dungeons, rare bosses, randomly appearing friends and foes, you can build your party from one of six characters, dive into a deep crafting system and generally just experience a world perhaps you haven't seen before. I give gameplay 17 out of 20. Take a look at these shots. One of the main things I noticed were the story elements, where the comic panels clearly reflected in the text of the characters was wonderful. The environments and backgrounds are all very unique, however there is definitely some asset recycling going on here, but when the assets are high quality that isn't so much of an issue. Enemies look great and your main characters also have fantastic animations applied to them, especially those quirky little celebrations when you win a battle. For me, graphics do the subject matter justice in the best possible way. Performance can be a little on the sketchy side at times, particularly in the larger areas you will notice some slowdown and I would definitely say there are dips below 30 at times. The game seems to be using dynamic resolution scaling which we've become accustomed to but does create a slightly blurrier image at times. Overall though the graphics do an excellent job of bringing the world to life and I give them 17 out of 20. At $39.99 or £34.99 in good old blighty, this is definitely aimed at more the premium end of the market, and in my opinion it definitely earns that price tag. Having played the game for around about 25 hours, I can honestly say there is an incredible amount on offer here. If you're a fan of old school action RPGs, and even classic dungeon crawlers such as Diablo, then you're definitely going to want to consider picking this one up. Whether it's exploring new areas, crafting that new and epic weapon, or just enjoying the banter between the characters. You break easier than I do, remember? Battle Chasers Night War is well worth your time, effort and money. And I give it a value score of 18 out of 20. That brings me on to my final verdict. As I'm sure you've already gathered, I enjoyed this one a lot. I really don't think you need to have played past classics to enjoy this one. With a compelling story, a great crafting system, epic loot and a fun experience overall, this game scores a switch up score of 91%. This is definitely switch up gold. 
let me know down in the comments what did you think of the game did you like the look of it did you enjoy the review hit that like button maybe consider subscribing for all things switch all the time cheers guys switch up